Hi guys. So I'm back with a really big canvas. This is a 18 by 24 inch canvas. And I did put a second layer of gesso over this area where I want to do my silhouette on this larger canvas. So even though it came already gessoed, I did paint a second layer of gesso just over here because I'm gonna do my silhouette in that area so I have my female silhouette here it's a pre-cut vinyl so if you guys are interested there's links in the description or you can view the card right up in the corner here too to go to my crafty gen art store and I could definitely cut you one and ship it to you so you can do your own uh, fun acrylic pour silhouette and it's super easy, I'm just going to peel off, you get the positive and the negative side of the silhouette. Now because this is such a larger size, this is 18 inches, I'm just going to peel it back like this. Whoops. There we go. Like so. So you can see, here's the positive side, and I'm going to use the negative side for today's acrylic pour swipe. <laughs> now you want to make sure you place it where you'd like on the canvas. I like to go in the first one-third of the canvas because this is the way I'm going to swipe. But you could definitely put it in the middle if you wanted to. There's lots of different options. And it's removable, so you can just pick it up and move it over to where you would like it. So I'm thinking maybe right about there would be really good. Maybe down a little bit, but that would be the area I'm going to work with it. Just like that. So now I'm going to grab my Liquidex gloss varnish and I have it in just a squeeze bottle. I'll have a link in the description for the Liquidex gloss varnish and you don't need very much you just need a little bit. So I'm going to grab a little one of my little silicone cups to put the Liquidex gloss varnish in. These things are great because uh, once it dries inside you can just peel it right out. Now you only have to put gloss varnish underneath your silhouette and out a bit and then I go over. So I'll show you right now. And you want a thin coat. You don't want a thick coat and you put the vinyl back down while it's wet. But the gloss varnish does dry fairly quickly. So just an FYI. So you put it on either side of the silhouette line and then you just push it down with the vinyl or with the paintbrush. And I go over the side and onto the canvas. I peel this back. And voila! Now it's important not to put any Liquidex gloss varnish here on the edge because you will get a bump that'll happen once it dries. So make sure just not, it's usually close near the nose, just make sure not to put any gloss varnish near that edge and you should be fine. I'm just going to push that edge down up here so we get a nice seal. And I'm just going to let this dry and then we'll come back and do the pour. Alright, so this is all dry and well sealed. I added a piece of painter's tape just to extend the vinyl so that when I swipe I don't have to worry about any paint getting on that edge. For swiping today I taped two transparencies together. 
So these are just acetate, uh, they call them transparencies, you can buy them at any, you know, like staples or something, or there's a link in the description too. And I'm going to use that to swipe the large canvas. Instead of paper towel, because just because it's such a large canvas, this is just going to hold up a little better for rigidity, I think. So I've got that ready. I'm just going to put it right up here for now. And I have my colors ready to go. So I'm going to use this really pretty medium tone brown. It's got a bit of copper in it for the swiping color. That's why there's so much of it. So this is just the mixing formula of one to one ratio to flow with a little bit of water. There's going to be no silicone in this because this is the color I'm going to use to swipe. So I don't add silicone into that color. For the rest of these, they're the same formula, but I am going to add silicone into each of these. And for your rate, for your consistency, you just want to make sure, like when you take a big gob of it, that it drips off like runny honey. Add a little, I say use more medium than water. Water is just what you add to react. <laughs> Can hear my puppies. So you just want the consistency of runny honey is kind of what you're going for. And these have all been mixed with Floetrol and water and they're pretty good consistency. I have to add the silicone. So 100% silicone oil. Today I'm using silicone oil. Got this on Amazon for acrylic pouring. I've used up, took a few years, but I used up the uh, other silicone I was using, it was treadmill. And depending on how much paint, like this one I'm putting three drops just because there's a lot of paint and no silicone in that one. So that's for the silicone. And all you want to do is just push the silicone down to the bottom, just like so. Just so it's in there. The more you mix it, the smaller your cells will get. So if you want larger cells, just make sure to not mix it too much and push it down. And now the fun part. <laughs> so I'm going to swipe this way. So I want to put all my colors on. I'm going to start right around here. I want the red band. Just like so. And I'm also going to incorporate a dream weaver in here, so just going to mentally kind of picture that when I'm doing this. Don't be afraid to let it go over the edge because you can always create paint skins from what goes over the edge of your painting. So nothing, none of the paint really gets wasted. You want to get good coverage on your painting surface. This is a, the Amsterdam, it's like a metallic black. This is almost like a mustardy color. I kind of really like it. I didn't want to get too much bumblebee color, so I went with some red too, just to make sure. Whoop! I'm going to put more red.
And if you have to, you could even mix up more color. It's totally up to you. I think that's looking pretty good for coverage. Might pour a little bit of white in a few areas. Just like so. Now, don't be afraid, like you can swipe and then re swipe. So, if you're worried about the first try, I wouldn't really worry too much. <laughs> Alright, this is gonna get really messy. And I hope I don't go over the edge of my lowly Vifi mat at all. <laughs> but I'm just gonna run some of my swiping color right here. Just like that. Beautiful. Now the fun part is the swipe. I grab my transparency and you just want to lightly glide it. So you want to kind of capulate Populate the transparency like so. I'm gonna make sure I get it on that side too. This is a huge canvas, so. <laughs> oh my goodness. paint on the edge. <laughs> I'm going to pick that up and put it over here for a second. Just so I don't get paint everywhere. <laughs> I just have some areas I gotta fix. Like right there. This didn't quite get it. Up here a little bit. Let's torch. So torching just helps to pop all the silicone bubbles. You'll kind of see them start to appear. If you're wondering about this little portion of the face, I would just stretch or add a bit of the color just so it stretches for the brown and just move it around so that I make sure I get good coverage for when it's drying. Now there is a lot of paint on this canvas so sometimes that is why I will swipe back and forth. You can also tip but it will stretch out your cells just as an FYI. So I have done tipping before. You'll see it starts to sh kind of stretch and warp them, but you can get kind of some cool effects too. That is looking really cool. So this is going to take quite a while to dry. Looking good. We got some great cells happening. They're really pretty. They're going to keep spreading as the silicone keeps coming up. I just love the way that a solid color disappears into a bunch of other colors with the acrylic swipes. I think it's pretty cool. So this is going to take a long time to dry. Um, so I get asked a lot how long, so depending on how much paint you leave on your canvas, how large the painting is. My 10 by 20s generally are anywhere from two to three days. Um, this one might even take a week to dry. 
So definitely important to have it on a level surface because if your painting is not level, the paint will eventually just all move to the one side that's lowest and fall right off your painting. So it might look very different when you come back to it after letting it dry for so long. But I'll be back when everything is dry and see how it looks. Okay, everything is dry now on the painting and it's looking really awesome. I love the cells. It looks really good. I can feel the uh, silicone grease. So just a quick overview again guys to clean your paintings when you're using silicone is you just use some isopropyl alcohol. You can get it anywhere, super cheap. And all I'm going to do is I just take a piece of paper towel and I just put a little bit into the paper towel like so and I kind of look see where I got some shininess and that's where I'm gonna know that there's silicone there and I just do a quick once over like so you're gonna see a little bit comes off but not very much to be honest with this one and oh yeah there is a bar there so before I go and swipe again it's really important to make sure that all that alcohol I just wiped on evaporates so I'm just gonna let it sit and evaporate I'll come back I'll use the same towel to clean the rest off while I'm waiting I can remove the vinyl application of the beautiful female face. I'm just going to start on the bottom edge and just take your time slowly peeling it back and you're going to see sometimes you're going to get that happening where it pulls the gesso up. Don't worry, totally fixable pretty much everything's fixable with canvas. If you use a wooden canvas you won't have this happen. Obviously it's wood. <laughs> but uh, with a wooden canvas it just peels. You'll see I did that Howling Wolf one. It just peels off really easily and there's no worries about fixing things. But a lot of people will want to use canvas canvas especially if you're going to do dream catchers and stuff or different things with your canvases so if you get little cracks or pieces that peel up with the vinyl it's fixable and I'll show you guys how I've shown in a lot of different videos but it's always good to go back over review things just in case this is the first time you're seeing the video or you haven't seen the other videos I've posted where I show how to fix all the different stuff. Now this canvas is I think the next level up from the basic level at Michael's. The nice part is is the canvas is a little bit higher quality than the very the very basic ones that you get there so it held up a lot better because it is the higher quality canvas <laughs> but there she is I love it and I'm gonna fix this right away so that it does dry and it's super simple you just take some gesso I'll have links in the description for all the supplies used here today and it's just liquid X gesso. I just take a little bit right out of the tube and I just paint right over the hole just like so just to fix it because I'm gonna end up painting this negative space anyways so I'm not too worried about you know getting painting the whole thing over again I just want to fill in those holes just like that and just spread it out nice and even let that dry I'll just make sure there's none others we should be good 
So that's pretty much how you would fix a hole that you get from after peeling up your your vinyl. So if that happens, don't worry, you can totally fix it. Now this side, you can just touch. It's uh, the alcohol has dissipated. Now I'm just seeing where there's a concentration of silicone in certain areas. And that's where I'm going to kind of focus my cleaning for sure. And I make sure I don't go over those areas again till that alcohol has dissipated. Just like that. Looking pretty good. There wasn't too, too much that came up. And voila. So I'm going to work on the negative space of this painting. I love it. I love the cells and I'm going to break it up too. Because my plan was is to do... I'm going to paint this negative space, let that dry too. But I also want to do a nice big dream catcher in her hair somewhere. So it's kind of like, you know, the dream catchers catch your negative dreams and stuff like that. So it has to do with the head, dreaming. So I'm going to place it somewhere up here. And I'll have to figure out what size will work. Maybe down here even, but we'll see where I'll cut it out. So to begin with, I definitely don't want the white. I think I might go with the charcoal color on the dark side here. Now you can also paint a scene, like with my Howling Wolf video, I painted the Northern Lights with the Howling Wolf. You, I could paint a scene here with the negative space as well, but I think for now I'm just going to paint it the nice charcoal color and hand paint it and then I'm gonna go from there. You can use this so I still have the positive side of the vinyl so when you get my vinyls you get the negative side which is the side and the positive side. I can peel this off and I can place it on top here if you have trouble doing um, the fine lines next to the face that's totally a possibility, especially where the cells come right up to the silhouette. You can place that vinyl over top and protect it. I'm just going to hand paint it. It does create a bit of an edge, which is nice. And then you just hand paint right up to the silhouette and you just paint the whole thing. But definitely a faster way of doing it would be to put the vinyl on and protect it just like I did in the Howling Wolf video. Okay, so I'm going to get the paint ready and I'm just going to work on this side and let that dry so it's completely finished. Okay, so that's the first layer of the negative space. I really like the contrast between the dark, dark charcoal and the nice brown face with a little bit of copper in there, copper tone. Um, picking up some of the darks from back here, so I think it's going to work really good. There are a few spots, obviously, I'll let this dry, probably do a second coat on the negative space. And I might paint something in here, I'm not too sure yet, but that's going to have to dry. And I'm going to figure out what size of Dreamcatcher I want to create 
in her headspace here. So super excited for that. Gonna see which different rings I have and then we'll come back and we'll create the dream catcher. Okay, so I have my ring and I cut out some construction paper just because it would give me a better visual on where I want to place my circle or dream catcher. So that's why I used construction paper just so I could figure out where exactly I want placement for the dream catcher. Now I'm seeing this is pretty bright here. I was thinking I might take that out with the dream catcher. I mean up here I could do put the dream catcher be ideal but I kind of like the cells that are happening right in here and stuff and I think I want to eliminate some of this bright white right here with the dream catcher hole because obviously I'll be cutting it out so that if you guys can see <laughs> try and block some of the reflective light because I think if I put it up here I'll still have this quite bright area in here so I think I'm going to put it right here to eliminate that bright white which I think will look really good right like there maybe I kind of like that placement right there. So it's a good tool and a good way to kind of figure out where you want to put your dream catcher within your acrylic pour, your space, is you can just cut the circle of your ring out of construction paper because you know that that's going to be a hole or a cavity. All in the decision making. <laughs> this is dried. I still haven't put a second coat, but I like how it's looking. I like that it's bringing out this red, it's darker, and the copper tones here are coming out quite bright. So I think that looks really cool. Instead of doing white or one of the colors, which I think might take away from the piece. So knowing that this is where I'm going to put my ring, I have to translate that to the back because the ring I've been putting on the back of the canvases. So a way I can do that is I can just kind of measure in from the sides and from here. Or you could take your needle or a push pin and kind of make a marking on where your edge should be. So. If I use a push pin here, I put a little hole in it. This way I'll know on the back where I kind of want the ring to start and where I want the top to be. So my hole is right here. And then I'll put one right here. And let's just check out if that translated to the back side. And voila, there's one right there and one right so, there. So you can I can see the two little puncture holes, so that's perfect. So I can line my ring up on the back side of the painting and I'll know that that's where I had made the decision to place it on the front side. Okay, so I have my super glue gel, and this is how I am going to glue the ring down to the canvas. So I'm actually just going to apply some of the gel to one side of the ring. Let me just squeeze it out, run it along. For the most part, I will be cutting out the canvas and folding it over. OK, 
Okay, so I gotta be very careful not to touch anywhere that has super glue. And just push it down. I didn't get any because this is where I was holding it, so I'm just going to apply some to the sides. Like so. So that should only take like 10 15 seconds to dry here. And while that's drying, I will grab my self healing cutting mat and it's an exacto. Alright, I zoomed you guys in a little bit. I have my self healing mat underneath to protect the surface and you're going to need an exacto knife. Now this time, so last time I hadn't cut quite far enough, I did about half an inch, so I might cut it a little bit closer in. That way I have more to fold over the ring. <laughs> so you can just draw a rough circle or I do have, so with that uh, link in the description for these rings, they do come with smaller sizes. So I can use a different size ring to trace around and kind of get a good idea of where to cut. And I can just use a pen or a sharpie. And you can just draw the ring. Because this is the back side of your canvas, so you don't have to worry as much like so. Like I said, they came in different size rings, so that was kind of handy. Or you can just rough draw it. You're going to be folding it over. Now that's a little bit smaller, so I might come in just a little bit, because I think when I did it, it was about here. So I'm going to cut right about here. But I'm going to use that smaller ring as just a guide. This is why it's really important to have your painting dry before you come in and cut because you're facing it face down. So I mean it doesn't have to be super perfect because you are going to be just folding it over your ring. So just cutting a fairly good circle in and around works good. If you have extra to, to fold over, don't worry about it. That was kind of a... <laughs> Just getting a nice clean cut. So there we took out the bright hot spot of that white. And then of course, because it's a circle, I can't exactly fold it without putting little notches everywhere so that it's easier to fold. So I'm just going to cut like so all the way around the ring. These ones you could put a bit closer together because you want to be able to peel it over like this and it'll so you the distance between here to here is what's going to kind of be straight so that's why you need some these to be a little bit closer together because if I was to cut the next one way over here that probably wouldn't fold over into a circle very well so we have cut our circle everything's ready to pretty much fold over the edge I left way more cut canvas, which works way better to fold over and glue down. Now, you can use lots of different types of glue. You don't have to use super glue. <laughs> but I just like it because it dries really fast and it holds really, really strong. So I think what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to start here and do the opposite and pull nice and tight so that it uh, really glues down good. So I put some glue down, probably too much, that's okay. 
just going to pull on that canvas so I get it nice and tight against the ring and then I'm just going to hold it down. I could use a weight on here. If you had something heavy you could put something heavy here too. But that's going to hold that nice and tight. And then if I go to the opposite side I can also pull and have it nice and tight so that there's tension on either side of the ring. And I'm just going to dab a bit of glue there and right about there in order to pull this side nice and tight and down. So this should just make it a bit easier than cutting it so close like I had before and this way it actually goes over the entire ring on the back side so you get good coverage over that ring and nobody will see it because it's on the back so the ring helps to hold the tension and so the canvas stays in place and it creates a beautiful space for your dream catcher. So I'm going to continue doing the rest of these just like so. Gluing them all down, pulling them tight, making sure they're secure down and creating the cavity for the dream catcher. Okay, and there you have it. We have everything nice and neatly glued down. Looks much better than my first attempt, but you know, I'm here trying things out with you guys. So this worked much better to cut it a little bit longer. And yeah, it looks really good. That's gonna dry, it's not gonna take too long to dry. So let's check out the front and just see how that looks from the other side. I'll move the self-healing cutting board and I'll just zoom you guys out a bit. And there we have it. I think it looks really good. <laughs> And you can't see any of the ring on the front side. It creates a nice sturdy hole in your painting. And I think that looks pretty awesome. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit just for the super glue to really adhere all of the stuff. And then we'll start on the dream catcher. So now we have all the glue dried on the back of the circle and something I forgot to mention in the beginning is after you clean your canvas if you wanted to do a coat a uh, couple coats of Liquidex gloss you totally can I think I can still do it even after I complete the dream catcher because I still have to do a second coat here but just for you guys I'm gonna keep going and then when it's done I'll just do a couple coats <laughs> Now for dream catchers, you can use the traditional material, which is sinew. Um, it is made from animals. There is artificial sinew. So, I mean, the artificial stuff is basically just like this wax thread and stuff. So instead of getting the um, traditional stuff, which wouldn't, I don't really know where they source it or anything, I just went with the artificial and this you can get on Amazon. There's links in the description for this wax thread. And you can get a bunch of different colors too, which is kind of nice. Instead of just the brown. So as with the mentioned before with doing dream catchers within your acrylic pores, because you can't wrap the wire, like normally a dream catcher, you would just wrap the wire around the hoop to make knots and stuff but with this we have the painting so I have to thread it through with a needle so I'm just gonna pull off enough thread to do the foundation work of the web with a little bit extra probably for the knots 
So right about here is how much thread. So all I did was I just kind of put the thread around the circle and added a little bit extra. And now I know that right here is where I have to pull the thread through the painting in order to do the foundation work of the Dreamcatcher. So I'm going to just mark this by... I'm going to tie a little bit of green thread onto here just to mark where I gotta pull that thread through. You can you can twist that around a toothpick. There's lots of different ways of marking it. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in just for this portion of the dream catcher. There we go. <laughs> that way you can see There we go. Nice zoomed in so you can watch me up close. And what you want to do is you can mark with a a white charcoal pencil uh, where you want to put your thread through so an even portion. So obviously I just kind of turn this a bit so it's straight. I would do the bottom straight across and the top straight out to the sides and you can measure yours so that it's super even I'm just eyeballing it but you could definitely measure it and mark it and then you just want to thread the wax thread through just like this whoops so once you thread it through you'll be able to bring that thread back through the painting. So I'm going to start at the bottom and you want to be careful because when you want to come from the bottom up you don't want to hit that wire ring. Okay so because I let the glue dry completely <laughs> you might have issues with hitting a big glob of glue, glue if you use quite a bit of glue like I did. So I'm just going to pull this through pretty much all the way up to my green thread there. Just right there. And now I'm just going to tie a knot so that this stays nice and secure on the bottom. Just like that. Now this part of the thread is going to be used to finish the rest of the dream catcher. So this is for the foundation work and this is for the rest of the dream catcher because obviously we need more thread. But I will have to unspool some because this is too big to go through the hoops that I'm about to create. <laughs> so always going from the bottom and coming up, I'm just going to, so this was my mark right about here. Whoop. I'm going to come up from the bottom and pull the thread through. One thing you gotta watch is that you don't get it all tangled, so I'm just gonna push that thread to the side. Now as you can see, we have a hoop. I've pulled the thread through. I wanna go through the hoop, down, and pull it all the way through nice and tight. And there, we have our first hoop. Looking good. Now I'm gonna keep going around the entire circle at even points, so I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this is obviously the end. So we'll have even loops. So it might be easier to work it from the back if your glue is already dried because I realized trying to put the needle through the dried glue is kind of hard but 
I was able to space them out fairly evenly, so it's not too not too bad. So I'm going to put it under through this hole here from under and then I'm going to go back through the hole and thread it back to the back of the canvas where I can tie it off. And I might just flip it over again so I can actually pull it through. Now you can keep this piece of thread as you can see working when I pulled off enough thread to go around I pulled off a little extra and I did have extra so it's pretty close you I probably pulled off too much but I'm going to keep this piece just to tie off if I have to for the end now this is the string that I'm going to use to do the rest of the webbing so I'm just going to pull off a whole bunch so it'll be easier because this tube will not fit through these holes because it's just too big. There. Now it's kind of a workable piece to create the dream catcher. So I'm going to flip it back over. So I'm going to grab the workable thread and I want to put it through the first loop. So I go from the bottom up, just like so, putting it through the first loop. And now I'm going to put it through the loop I'm holding with my two fingers and tighten till that re makes a little knot in the middle of that first loop. And you just keep going around the circle, continuing to go from the bottom up and then putting the thread back through the loop that you just created, tightening it so that it uh, creates a knot in the middle and that's gonna create your weaving for your dream catcher so you just keep going around and around and around and you can add beads along the way as you're gonna see I just unravel the main thread and I put a bead on and I just leave the bead uh, on the string as I work around it and once you get to the middle that's where you're going to end your dream catcher. There you have it guys. That is a dream catcher with the female silhouette. I love it. I love how it turned out. I love the red colors and the fieriness of it with the charcoal uh, dark negative space. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy creating your own dream catcher within your acrylic pores. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody for subscribing, liking, watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it and commenting. And thank you so much for using my Amazon links. They help me out greatly and there's no extra cost to you. And thank you so, so much, guys. And I hope you have a blast creating.